Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, or whatever, I don't care. <laughs> uh, in today's video, I'm gonna show you something slightly different. Uh, I'm gonna have to show you how to do an implementation of a structural similarity index algorithm in C Sharp. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, uh, <laughs> the fuck is a structural similarity index algorithm? Uh, well, <laughs> listen to me, buddy. Uh, I have prepared a presentation for us to uh, actually uh, go through. Just try to lay the groundwork to show what I'm actually trying to fucking do here. Yeah, but other than that, if you're a fucking nerd, <laughs> I have a link in the description down below uh, to a video that explains it pretty well. Basically, uh, the premise is that you have two images that you want to compare and uh, say, oh, what's the similarity between these two images? How similar are they? That's the algorithm. So, um, let me show you uh, the presentation just to get a visual representation. So it <laughs> You understand it better, you fucking. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, so, we start with two images of any size, aspect ratio, or formats, like PNG, JPEG, does not matter. And we take those two images, right, and we convert them into the same size and formats, PNG or JPEG, doesn't matter which one. It's as long as they're the same file size. And then we take these. Uh, we, we subdivide these images into separate regions and each region we call a window now once we have that we uh, go into these individual windows and calculate a few things firstly we calculate the average color of that specific window and then we calculate the variance color now the average color is easy enough to understand uh, but what is variance? you know what the fuck is that? <laughs> uh, well let me tell you about it variance is defined by this little handy dandy fucking formula and uh, you don't need to pay attention to all this complicated shit what you need to pay attention to is this term right here uh, this term takes the difference between the average color the x with the line that's the average color and the color minus the average color so it's the difference between the current color and the average and the squared you can imagine if you have a image that's just one solid color this term would be zero because all the colors would be equal to the average. However, if you have an image uh, with a lot of different colors, a lot of detail, this term would be really big because, well, yeah, especially since it's squared. And then, uh, yeah, you just sum all those up, divide them by the number of pixels in the image, and you go, you have variance. So once we have that, we can move on to the next step. And the next step is to take uh, two windows, two separate windows, and between these two windows, we can calculate the covariance. Now, the covariance is very similar to the variance, except now we're just comparing how varied two windows are from each other. And uh, that's defined by this little handy dandy formula. So once we have this, the covariance, we can take that, combine it with the average and variance color of each image, and we can take all that and shove it into a handy dandy little formula which spits out this value, which is the structural similarity index value between these two windows. And once we have done that, we can do the same for all the other windows. And once we have done that, we take all of those values and we take the average of those and then we get the final value, which is the mean structural similarity index, which is the similarity between the images, that is our final value. And there you go, that's the algorithm. So now that we uh, hopefully know how that works, <laughs> we can finally again to implement it in C Sharp. You can use any IDE you want, but I'm going to use Visual Studio 2019. Uh, so I'm just going to make a solution. Uh, get everything sorted you can follow along if you want got that good let's start so here we are in the main function uh, I'm just gonna go and 
go ahead and uh, make a uh, class and storing all the logic and data we need for the comparison. So there we go. Uh, we have our class and to begin I'm just going to make two fields called image1 and image2 of type bitmap because it would be nice to know what images we are going to be comparing. And bitmap is a uh, member of the system.drawing namespace. I'm just going to add a using statement at the top to include that. We are going to be using bitmaps because they are uh, easy to use and are quick to make operations on. Other than that, it'd be nice to know uh, what size we're going to uh, rescale these images into uh, and what size of the windows are going to be. So I'm going to make two uh, integer fields and I'm going to call this one rescale size and I'm going to call this one window oh, size. Window size. And other than that, it'd be nice to know like what other, uh, what other uh, parameters might be in the uh, formula we need to calculate the structural similarity index. But what's the formula? You might ask. We haven't seen that yet. Well, <laughs> yes, we have. You. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, so we have a few things going on here. First of all, we have whatever, you don't care. Uh, the, these terms, this is the, the average color of the two images. This here is the covariance. These two here are the, um, is the variance of the two images. And then the right, same thing here. So we have those things. Okay, so what do, we, what do we need to add? What variables do we need to add? Okay, well, we need the C, one and two. I can go into the details of what C is, but we don't need to do that. I can just like put the code in and like slap it in there. Yeah, it's, and then it's done. You know, it's good. But uh, yeah, let's get to that. Okay, so C1 and C2 basically rely on two other variables called K1 and K2, which are just constants where uh, k1 is 0 0.01 and k2 is 0 0.03 and we don't really need to go into details of why they're that the research paper just came to the conclusion that those numbers are the most efficient ones okay but uh, other than k we also need the dynamic range of uh, the images which is just some hoogly boogly bullshit uh, basically all we really need to know is how many bytes of data are per pixel in each image. And basically, um, we don't really need to go into detail that much. Uh, really, you just need to like paste this in here and then hoogly boogly, uh, you're done. And then obviously, you know, define what K is. So now we have C1 and C2, which is just some, some constants that we need to make the formula work. Okay, nice. But <laughs> other than that, we also need some more shit that we uh, need for the comparison later. Uh, I can explain them when they come up. So I'm just gonna paste them in here. All right, so there we go. That's the constructor done. We have all the variables we need, all the stuff we need for the comparison C1 and C2. Now, we can go on to the next step. And what is the next step? Well, let me tell you, the next step is doing the actual algorithm. So I'm just gonna make a function real quick called calculate similarity that's going to return a double which is going to be the similarity between the images when we are done so first things first we're going to need to rescale these images to be the same size and format so for that I'm going to make another separate function and I'm just gonna call this function rescale bitmap it's going to take in a bitmap and return a new bitmap that is the resized one. And basically, well, I'm just gonna put in some boogly boogly bullshit here. Also, gonna need to uh, use the system of drawing of drawing 2D uh, namespace. Just gonna have to import that. And there you go. You have the resize function. Uh, don't worry about this. This is just how you resize bitmaps. It's pretty complicated. I don't know why. 
But uh, huh. yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna post the code down below so you can just copy paste this. You know, the, this is not what the tutorial is about. I'm not gonna teach you every single little fucking step of the way. This is just about structures and learning this. Like, come on. Do your own fucking research. Huh? <laughs> so, once we have that, we can just scale the images. And then we are going to move on to the actual algorithm. So what's the algorithm? Well, we're looping through all the windows of the functions. So we're going to have to make two for loops for the X and Y uh, window position. So here I'm just making two for loops uh, that go up to the amount of windows per line. And because the images are always going to be square, it's going to be the same amount of windows vertically as it is horizontally. And then we're going to need to initialize some variables like this. And then now in these two for loops, we are inside of the windows. And what do we do inside the windows? Well, we need to loop through all the pixels and take the average variance and covariance. So now we are looking at a singular pixel of the image. And what are we doing with the pixels? When first things first, we need to get the pixel from the image. And how do we do that? Well, just like this, we use the get pixel method of the bitmap object to get the color of the current pixel at the window position and the pixel position inside the window. After that, uh, we need to simplify our information a little bit uh, because right now we have three color channels, R, G, and B, we're calling them blue. But preferably, we'd only want one because that makes things a lot simpler. So we're going to convert these RGB channels to just one brightness channel. And to do that, I'm going to use the ITR recommendation BT 601 for Luma values, which is just some more hoogly boogly bullshit, uh, which basically just takes some amount of each color channel, adds it up into one channel, and magically it represents the color, the brightness, sorry, of that pixel fairly well. So uh, we're just gonna do that. And then lastly, uh, these values are right now ranging from 0 to 255. However, according to the research paper, the values need to be b between 0 and 1. However, they don't actually state that, though it is incredibly necessary for the formula to work. So that was fun for me to <laughs> try and figure it myself. So let's do that. And to get it to be between 0 and 1, we just divide it by 200. So there we go. Now we have the brightness value of the current pixel. And what do we do with that? Well, we need to add it up to an accumulator. Luckily, we made a variable for that previously. There we go. We just add it up to the average. And then we just divide it by the number of pixels in the window. And there we go. Now we have the average color for that window. And next step, we need to do the variance. Now here's a problem. The variance requires that you've already calculated the average. So Unfortunately, we're going to have to add to make another loop. We can't do it at the same time in here because the average is not defined yet. So we're going to have to make another loop. And it's the exact same as the previous loop where we do the average. Just that instead we accumulate to the variance and covariance instead. And then you also divide by number of pixels per window. And then once we have that, we now have the average, the variance, and the covariance, and we have the constants we saw before, C1 and C2. So now we can do the actual calculation. And here we go. We have the top bit of the uh, fraction, and we have the bottom bit of the fraction. And I have, for readability's sake, separated the top and bottom into two different variables. And if you look, you can see here we have the C2s, here's that's matching the C1s, and we have the average here, the times with the covariance, boom, here we have variance, we have the average squared here. And there you go. That's the equation for the structural similarity index for one window. And what do we need to do with that? Well, we need to do it for every single window. So we need to add an accumulator for that as well. So let's do that real quick. So here I have defined the variable at the very top. And then I add it to the variable here. And once we have done that for all the windows, which is uh, this loop here, we're looping through all the, the windows. Once we have done that for all the windows, added up the structural similarity, we divide it by the number of windows to take the average structural similarity. 
just like that. And then we just return the structural similarity index. And there you go. We've calculated the similarity between these two windows. Let's try it out. So here I am just loading in two bitmaps from memory of two images. I'll show them to you later what they look like. And then I'm making a object of the comparer class that we just were in. And I pass in all the arguments for it. And then I make a new variable called similarity and I set it equal to the output of the function we just made. And then I write it to the console. Let's have a look. And wow, there you go. You can see it says that image one and image two have a, what was that? 16.2% similarity. Wow. Let's have a look to see if that's actually correct. Let's look at the images. So here we have image one, right? And here we have image two. And as you can see, these two images are uh, not exactly very similar to each other. So I would say that having an output of 16% similarity between these two images is pretty good. Let's try something else that's slightly more similar. See if it changes. I'll try between image one and image two. I'll show you what they look like later. All right. And here, as we can see, it says that these two images have a 78.1% similarity. Let's have a look at the images. So again, we have image one and here is image two. As you can see, they are quite similar. So I would argue that these two having a, what, 72% or whatever it was, similarity is a pretty fair uh, judgment, I would say. And there you go, there we have it. That's the tutorial for how to implement a structural similarity index in C sharp. Have fun coding in the future. See you, cadets. You know, sometimes people ask me, you know, maybe you should do that. <clears throat> And you know, to that I say, uh, oh, what's the big 